heard. Uh, Lord Brahma, he is, in this pastime, he's become um, pretty puffed up. He's become a little bit proud. No offense to Lord Brahma, this is the meaning, this is the pastime. And he's decided that he's going to, as Prophet says in the purport, um, he wanted to show his power. He wanted to exhibit his power uh, to the cowherd boys. And specifically, he thought, who is this little boy, this little Krishna? Right? Someone said he's about six years old, beginning of the Pogada Leela. You know, he's a <coughs> six-year-old boy. You know, who is this? Uh, <laughs> teach a, uh, a lesson to, uh, to Krishna. He's thinking, who is this little boy? You know, you know, he thinks he's so, everyone's giving him so much attention, so much affection. And something that often accompanies pride is if you're very proud of your intelligence or something that you have, then if someone else has something that might be a little bit more than what you have, what also goes along with pride? Envious. Envy, that's right, enviousness. Then we think, oh, who is this person? How, how could he possibly have something better than me? Because I've already understood that I'm the most intelligent. I'm the creator of the entire universe. And uh, who is this person that sitting here and uh, acquiring so much affection? Everyone's giving him so much love. He's sitting, he's performing these great feats and killing all these demons. Who is this? You know, he's he's not actually understood yet who I am. So I'll take this opportunity to show him who I am. And then after that, he will understand. So Lord Brahma comes with this type of mood with which he's going to teach a lesson. And we also sometimes have the propensity that we, instead of trying to uh, teach in a way, we're teaching a lesson to someone. I'm going to be the instrument of your higher learning, <laughs> your higher education. I'm going to give you exactly what you need so you learn and you see. Anyone here has ever been in that mood? I'm sure that one here is Some of these great sages, no <laughs> one would dare admit these kind of things. But <clears throat> so Lord Brahma has come in this mood, and so he uses his mystic potency to remove the coward boys. And then Krishna is uh, unfathomed. He's not even he's not even disturbed or distressed. He immediately just because because of course he is the all-knowing, you know, supreme personality of God, and so he immediately just expands himself and replaces all of the cowherd boys and all of the calves. And what Shukadeva Goswami is saying here is that he's doing this why? To give pleasure. Now, it's interesting because this is Krishna's mood. His mood is to give pleasure. Now, sometimes we, we think of this contemplation about is Krishna really impartial? Right? We think is Krishna impartial because it's explained that God is impartial. He's equal to all. Right? What's the Bhagavad Gita verse? Uh, um, something like Anyway, the Krishna is equal to everyone. So <laughs> many No, that's the, he's the best friend to everyone, which is it. But there's another one that he's equal to everyone. But yeah, Suradam Sarabhuta. Suradam Sarabhuta. Suradam, yeah. Surik Saradam. So Krishna, he's, he's the friend of everyone. So his intention, even though Lord Brahma has come to teach him a lesson, but his intention is, okay, let me give pleasure. Let me give pleasure to Lord Brahma, and also let me give pleasure to the mothers and to the, cow, the cows, and let's just see how this can unfold for everyone, for everyone who becomes benefited. Even though someone has come at him with a mentality of uh, enviousness, in one sense, or a mentality full of pride, but Krishna doesn't exactly like get his back up, you know, like that 
Anyone's ever seen a dog come up to a cat? You seen that? Mm -hmm. Ever seen what a cat does? Cat's back just goes whoosh, like that, and all the hair stands up. So sometimes we can also be like that. Someone approaches us in the wrong mood, and we're like, claw your eyes out. So, so Krishna didn't respond like that. Krishna was just like, okay, anyway, that's. Of course, we're not Krishna. <laughs> if we, if we, if we even had probably a, a little bit more minute empowerment of Krishna, we would be very dangerous. <laughs> but <clears throat> Krishna he just expands himself, and he's unbothered. But his mood is to give pleasure. Now Lord Brahma, he then takes the cower boys, and he thinks, okay, I'll just wait, come back. And when he returns, he sees that. Um, Krishna is still playing with his coward boys on the bank of the Jumuna and having lunch and nobody's bothered. <laughs> and this is the thing, sometimes when people have that mood, if we give them attention, what happens? We actually feed. We feed it, don't we? Mm -hmm. Because that's that's what they want. They want to be in the center. So Lord Brahma has come, he wants everyone to recognize his prowess, his greatness. And uh, Krishna just isn't bothered. <laughs> he's like, because he's he's the supreme supreme humility, right? He's okay, whatever. You know, I'll just carry on enjoying with myself. I'll just expand myself. And Lord Brahma comes back, and he's he becomes immediately very frustrated. He's upset. He's thinking, what is this? How is this? I'm sure that I put the cowherd boys over here. How is it that they're all here again? What's going on? And then that little voice inside of his head, you know, the little voice that's often trying to tell us what's the right thing, you know, the, the voice that we often suppress. <laughs> Push that right there. <coughs> analogy, is getting, analogy is given there in uh, the American Indian culture that inside of everyone there's a good dog and a bad dog. Right? So inside of all of us there's the good voice and the bad voice, or uh, the, the Christian kind of analogy is that on one shoulder there's a little devil, devil. and on the other side there's a angel. angel, right? So there's always this kind of duality that we're, we're dealing with within ourselves. So Lord Brahma, from within, he hears that little voice of proper consciousness, you know, the super soul, the, the righteousness is starting to come through, and he begins to think, Maybe there's something I missed. Maybe there's something I got wrong here. Maybe this little boy is something more than just a little coward boy. So in that way, Lord Brahma, Lord Brahma begins to assess the situation and he eventually comes to his senses after Krishna really reveals himself by doing what? By unveiling all of the calves and the cowherd boys and showing forearmed, uh, forearm form and uh, of all of these. It's a nice picture I was looking for this morning. It's one of my, one of my favorite pictures. So this picture here. Where Krishna then uh, reveals himself in, as all of the cowherd boys and calves, so many hundreds of, you know, all of a sudden, that, you know, uh, all of these Vishnu forms are there, these expansions of Krishna are present, and Lord Brahma is like rubbing his eight eyes. <laughs> He's thinking, maybe I need to go get some glasses. <laughs>